Step into the year 1948, where the vibrant California streets echo with the thunderous presence of a legendary motorcycle club, the Hells Angels. This fearless group sets themselves apart from the crowd, proudly taking the title of a 1% club, a symbol that encapsulates their rebellion and yearning for freedom. For a solid decade, the Hells Angels rise as an emblem of status within society, their dominance unchallenged, their name feared by all who dared oppose them. However, such supremacy could never remain unchallenged forever. The tides of fate are bound to bring change in due course. Fast forward to the year 1959, a new contender emerges from the shadows. The 13 founding members of this mysterious group seem to have a distinctive European flair. Their embroidered leather and denim jackets setting them apart from the Hell's Angels' dark aesthetic. While everything starts as a pacifist gathering of friends, the winds of transformation sweep through the ranks as the 1960s draw to a close. With the passing years, a dark evolution takes hold, transforming the once peaceable collective into a force of unbridled violence and, most significantly, sworn rivals of the Hell's Angels. For a decade, John Satan Marin and his fierce pagans rule over Philadelphia with an iron fist, their dominance fueled by sheer force. As a one-percenter club, the pagans ensure that their territorial claim over Philly resonate with other motorcycle clubs. Any trespasser faces dire consequences for daring to step foot in their domain. However, the animosity between the pagans and the angels only deepens over time, sowing seeds of an ever-intensifying rivalry. In 2002, the world bears witness to a gruesome display of violence, a tumultuous clash driven by revenge, territorial reclamation, and unbridled brutality. By then, the angels have already established strongholds in New Jersey and New York, Yet their audacious attempt to infiltrate Philadelphia ignites a fierce resistance within the pagans, defending their homeland with unwavering resolve. The angels begin recruiting pagans, aiming to dismantle their loyalty and shift alliances. However, the first pagan who switches sides by trading the Philadelphia chapter for angel affiliation commits a mortal sin. The pagans gather at a renowned bar called Diamonds, because Diamond is what they call chapter presidents. Members come to the meeting from far and wide, including the original crew from Philly. They are only informed of a mandatory ride, unaware of the destination, yet compelled to ride on. Upon arrival, they learn the true purpose of their ride, to confront the Hell's Angels head-on. Their enemies are hosting the Hellraiser's Ball, a tattoo and motorcycle convention held at a nearby convention center in Nassau County. The pagans vow to shatter it all. How dare the angels hold an event on Long Island? The insult raises fierce determination in the pagans to reclaim what is rightfully theirs, regardless of the consequence. Aware of the price they might pay, some pagans hastily jot down wills on napkins, with one member even giving his motorcycle to his daughter, accepting his impending fate. The Hellraiser's Ball welcome the public, including women and children who are mixed with the gang members. It seems like an ordinary day, but the atmosphere suddenly changes as the pagans storm in. And that's when all hell breaks loose. They come with brute force, ready to risk everything for the sake of brotherhood. Within the next few seconds, the pagans are pushing their way through the front door, armed with everything from axe handles to metal pipes and knives. And when a Hell's Angel tries to defend himself with a small pistol, the scene erupts into a full-scale war. Yet with no escape plan, nowhere to flee, the chaos encompasses all. In the aftermath, 73 pagans are arrested by the police along with two angels, including the shooter charged with second-degree murder. Still, the pagans consider themselves victorious. All 73 stood defiantly, accepting imprisonment and vowing to never abandon their club. They showed up, went to Long Island and thrilled them. Kicked the Hells Angels ass in their own f***ing territory. 73 pagans went to prison. No one talked. 
Everybody did their time. They went there for club business, and they all came home. They made it crystal clear they will go anywhere, anytime, and take care of business. Yet one wonders, has the unbreakable brotherhood of the pagans endured through the years? Or is it much easier to infiltrate the brethren now? Time marches on, but the essence of brotherhood remains steadfast within the pagans. Loyalty is not just an unspoken expectation. It is a commanding force that tightly grips each member. No one dares to venture beyond its boundaries, for the consequences would be dire. Yet one cannot help but ponder. What if someone are to fake loyalty to the Brotherhood? Imagine this. A 56-year-old ATF officer assumes a false identity, skillfully gaining the trust of the bikers and stealthily infiltrating their ranks. He becomes a silent observer, attending their clandestine meetings, bearing witness to the most brutal of crimes, and even enduring several days in jail on a trumped-up gun charge. Remarkably, his cover remains intact over the span of two arduous years. This is the tale of Ken Croak, an audacious officer who risked everything to dismantle the pagans from within. While many contend that motorcycle clubs often have mainstream members with regular jobs who are upstanding citizens in society, the lines between lawful and outlaw blur within the pagans. Nearly every club member carries a felony record, collectively projecting an aura of a fiercely violent organized crime syndicate. Given these circumstances, how could anyone infiltrate one of the nation's most exclusive biker gangs? It seems as if the pagans never anticipated anyone possessing the audacity to breach their inner sanctum. Their guard was down. Treating the undercover officer no differently from any prospective recruit, they subjected him to tests of loyalty and pushed his limits. However, he emerged victorious on every occasion. Gradually, he befriended a fellow member and earned the trust of the entire gang, ultimately attaining the coveted status of a fully patched member within the one percenter ranks of the Long Island chapter. Yet, he was more than just another member. He knew that to fulfill his true purpose, he had to ascend through the ranks. After a year of bearing witness to brutality and steadfastly proving his loyalty, he earns the nickname of Slam when he forcefully subdues a man during a rough barroom brawl. Rarely seeing his loved ones, the officer is forced to adapt to a volatile, unpredictable lifestyle where the call to kill might come at any moment. Each morning brings the daunting question of what kind of violence awaits him that day. From confronting mountains of illicit drugs to diving headfirst into barroom melees and even plotting acts of premeditated murder, he witnesses it all. Yet on one fateful occasion, he receives a phone call from a fellow gang member who unexpectedly and ominously wants a meeting. The possibilities are endless. Perhaps his cover had been blown, and this fellow member intends to exact vengeance for his betrayal of the brethren. But to his relief, it isn't his own demise being plotted. It's someone else's. During his time within the gang, he also unearths a troubling truth, a dark undercurrent of white supremacy that courses through pagan culture. They may not set crosses on fire in public, but the presence of racism is persistent, blatant, and strong. They view those outside their ranks as subpar, inferior beings, carrying a sense of superiority wherever they roam. The pagans, at first glance, may appear as just another outlaw motorcycle club. However, they also embody a white supremacist group, unflinchingly committed to pursuing their agenda, traversing any limit in their path. But after spending so much time with the gang, there is one pertinent question that comes to mind. Is there humanity beneath the hatred? Sadly, there is no definitive answer as to why these members have descended into the moral abyss of violence and brutality. With countless individuals apprehended over the years for heinous first-degree murders, languishing behind prison walls for life, humanity seems to have eroded beneath the surface. For the pagans are, without a doubt, an outlaw motorcycle club, a name that they wholeheartedly live up to.